My name's Adam and I'm an artist out of Northern Wisconsin. I've been using the new Cheyenne Soul Nova Unlimited 2 every single day for the past month now and I feel like I've used it enough to where I could give you guys my full in-depth opinion on this machine. I'm going to be bouncing back and forth in this video going over the pros and cons on this tattoo machine and I'm going to compare it to some of my other favorite tattoo machines that I use on the market. So especially if you plan on buying this tattoo machine, make sure you watch the full video just so you don't take my opinion out of context. So let's get into it. I respect the journey it took for Cheyenne to make this tattoo machine. And this is the original version of the Soul Nova Unlimited, the Soul Nova Unlimited One. And this came out five years ago in 2019. 2019 was five years ago already. The original Unlimited tattoo machine marked Cheyenne's first entry into wireless tattoo technology. You go back just before this tattoo machine, you go back about six years ago and wireless tattoo machines just didn't exist. It was every artist's wet dream to have a wireless tattoo machine. And then just a year ago already, Cheyenne released the second version of their Soul Nova Nova and we will see it does not have a battery on it. They went back to a wired tattoo machine, but they went back to a wired tattoo machine for a reason. Not only did removing the battery from it make it a cheaper, more affordable option, they also changed the motor inside of this machine and then they also added different response modes to experiment with. And then Cheyenne released the engine battery which is sold separately and you can connect it right to your soul nova perfectly and it fits very very nicely and you'll see that the battery removes just like that and it has a display can you see where i'm going with this this is the prototype to this we've been the beta testers for the new unlimited 2 tattoo machine this whole time they have been just taking everyone's feedback on this that they created and they refined it and made this. And I'll be honest, they actually did a really good job on the Unlimited 2. So UPS tried dropping off the machine to me for three days in a row and they refused to give me the machine until I paid a $50 brokerage fee. For the first two days, I refused to pay the UPS guy and I messaged Cheyenne and Cheyenne said, just give him the money and we'll pay you back. Now I'm not saying that it's Cheyenne's fault because I don't really think it is. I think it's more of UPS's fault in my local area. But all I'm saying is I got robbed $50. And Cheyenne sent me the tattoo machine for free so I can't be that mad at them, but I am, I am down $50. So I'm going to be very honest <laughs> about this machine. The tattoo machine comes inside of some Cheyenne packaging and I'm pretty sure I opened it up wrong. I'm, I think there's a special way to open it and it's supposed to display all the products inside it nicely, but I couldn't figure it out. So I just busted it open and everything was just there. Inside the box, you actually get a sample package of the capillary cartridges that Cheyenne makes. And I always thought that these needles were pretty interesting. I've never really used them on skin until I got this sample box right here. But the needle cartridge has somewhat of a spiral on the inside so when you suck up ink it actually has more surface area inside that needle cartridge so you can suck up more ink i just don't really like to use them just because i like to have control of the amount of ink that's inside my needle sometimes i do not want like an infinite amount of ink in my needle let's say if you're dipping into like blue ink or something and then you want to change to like red ink now you have to you have to clean out all that ink that is inside your capillary cartridge you'd have to clean all that extra ink out just to switch colors when i tattoo i'm constantly switching between colors but it would probably be nice if you're doing like a lot of line work or a lot of black solid fill where you could only be in one color like just black or something you didn't have to switch your colors constantly throughout a tattoo then the capillary needle cartridges would make a lot of sense cheyenne actually changed the case for this tattoo machine it's actually a little thinner and longer the previous model was actually thicker and more like egg shaped i do feel like the new case is better it's a lot more modern feeling and cleaner looking if that makes any sense but as always with all the tattoo machines that i get i get so many cases and i always just wish the cases were smaller just so they're easier to travel with opening up the case we'll see all the goodies inside of it we got batteries we got a battery charger we got o-rings we got the separate battery brain of the tattoo machine which is separate from the body of the new tattoo machine for the batteries they're using the keep power 18500 2000 milliamp batteries this is the same battery 
that we have seen before with the Akis tattoo machines. You would typically see a charger dock like this, but this is a different brand. It is a newer, different brand, and it actually has a quick charging mode on the side of it. There's a little lever on the side, and if you put it up all the way, you'll charge at 1.8 amp speed. So it's a quick charging type C charger block. And the new battery and brain of the tattoo machine just slides right down into the body of the machine and it snaps in just like that. It's magnetic and it has a nice snap to it. No matter how hard you try, you cannot shake it and make it fall out even though it is just held in by magnets. The new Unlimited 2 is a direct drive tattoo machine that comes in three different stroke lengths. The three different stroke lengths are 2.5 millimeters, 3.5 millimeters, and 4.5 millimeter stroke length. Some of you are probably thinking, what? I thought it was stroke adjustable. And that's because their marketing on this tattoo machine is very, very goofy. I think they are trying to copy FK Irons and how they do their marketing because they are trying to tell you that it is really easy to change the stroke length in your tattoo machine. You just buy a new one of these. That is basically buying a whole new tattoo machine. This has the motor and drive bar and everything inside of it. They are trying to trick you and make you think that this is your tattoo machine and that this is just the upgradable part. It doesn't make sense. It's just marketed really, really weird. I have a buddy that literally bought this tattoo machine because he thought that he was going to be able to easily adjust the stroke on it. But no, he was tricked. You got to buy a whole new tattoo machine to adjust the stroke on it. All you had to do, Cheyenne, was say that this battery was compatible with all the different stroke lengths. Just make a good product and be honest with your marketing now when you put the old version of the unlimited next to the new version of the unlimited you will see that the new one is slightly longer having the tattoo machine longer changes the balance of your machine it makes the back of your tattoo machine a little heavier and with tattoo machines we want them to be forward heavy so they are easy on our wrist and so we can use gravity and the weight of the machine to help us pull lines and inject ink there is a massive missed opportunity that Cheyenne had on this machine and I'm going to explain it to you right now. Cheyenne, if we get a new machine, we need a new grip. This is ridiculous. Knowing that the tattoo machine was going to be a little bit longer and that balance would be thrown off on the machine, they should have made a better forward grip to have better forward weight. And I'm not talking a heavy grip. I'm talking a big grip, guys, a 40 millimeter grip so that the weight would be countered on this machine. It is such an obvious thing when I look at this machine and such a missed opportunity. It's almost sad to say because this grip on this new tattoo machine is the exact same grip they released with all of their previous tattoo machines from the past decade. They keep releasing the same shithole grip because they want you to get their disposable grips to get different shapes. And because you force us to buy your disposable grips to get different shapes, I'll just never buy your disposable grips again. I actually got a Neo grip, which is an autoclavable rubber like silicone grip. And it goes right over your grip like that. And it's cleanable. So you don't need to buy a new one every single time you tattoo like a disposable grip. And it makes your grip bigger and you have forward weight and it's way better. Other than I had to cut it to size because a normal Neo grip is like this long, but Cheyenne wants to keep playing these games and making these little dinky grips. I had to physically cut uh, my Neo grip to fit. This feels really good. The buttons and display on this tattoo machine are very nice. It is a little awkward at first because you're not used to clicking the top button to turn it on and pause and everything because it is not this middle button that pauses, which during your tattoos, 100% every single one of you guys are going to click this middle button to pause and it is not going to pause. You actually got to click the button on top and it's just hard. It's just weird to get used to. <laughs> if this top button wasn't there, they could have probably cut out some space and then made the tattoo machine even lower profile, giving it even better balance. But for some reason, they didn't do that. They put the button on top when they could have easily just made this button, the pause, start, on, off button. Personally, the original unlimited tattoo machine was kind of unusable to me because you got to do the tilt to change your voltage and stuff. And you don't have a display that shows your voltage. They fixed that with the unlimited two because now we actually got a display. After five or six years, we finally got a display. And you know, it actually has Hertz also, which is the frequency of your needle, which I love. And you could change the Hertz to volts. And if you like the gesture controls that were on the original tattoo machine that is still available on this machine, you just got to go in the settings and you could turn it on and then you could change the voltage by tilting it like this, or you could change the voltage by actually twisting it like this. And I found the one where you twist it side to side is a little inaccurate feeling. It's like hard 
to tune as much as this one is. This one's a lot easier to do, um, but I still just suggest, you know, just using the buttons to change the voltage. There's a whole bunch of different settings you could change on the inside to change how your front display looks. You could change it so it's orientated for left-handed or orientated for right-handed. You could change the volts and hertz on the display. You could have your timer up, or you can see your response mode settings that you're in because this tattoo machine has several different modes. It has four different modes. It has steady mode, response mode one, response mode two, and responsive mode three. Changing the response Response modes on your tattoo machine changes what your maximum peak wattage output of your tattoo machine is. Now, Cheyenne doesn't give us the full statistics like some other companies do, but I am assuming that it is a nine watt motor. So when you're in steady mode, your tattoo machine is putting out a maximum of nine watts. Then when you're in responsive mode one, it's probably a maximum of six watts. Responsive mode two is probably a maximum of four watts. And then responsive mode three is probably like two watts or one watt of output. Essentially, the more wattage, the stronger your tattoo machine and the lower wattage, the weaker your tattoo machine. Steady mode is the strongest mode this is where your needle is going to be steady no matter how much pressure you put on the skin the tattoo machine has a speed controller on the inside keeping that needle consistent in steady mode and then in all the responsive modes your tattoo machine will have a little bit of bog to it and your tattoo machine will hit a little bit softer responsive mode one is like good for like blending and stuff responsive mode two is like for black and gray shading and responsive mode three is just like ridiculously soft. You're going to want to use steady mode for most things like lining, stipple, color packing and stuff like that. And all the responsive modes for blending and black and gray. My only real comments, I guess, on the interface is that it's just hard to get used to the button on top. You always try to hit the front button. And then I also wish that when you pulled this apart, that there was like a USB or something you could plug into your computer and do software updates. Um, because when the machine first came out, people were actually having software issues. And a lot of the first batch actually had to get sent back to Cheyenne and they fixed it. And now all the new tattoo machines are getting sold now don't have that issue but i mean it would just be nice to have a way to update your tattoo machine they should do it like bluetooth or something and you should be able to get like a cheyenne app or something you should be able to update it you should be able to like do anything with the display and adjust stuff i don't know i just think that we're in the future and that it would just be cool to do updates to your machine so how does it feel to tattoo with this machine so i'm used to using the akis m1 tattoo machine every single day at 4.1 millimeter stroke length and the new unlimited that i got is 4.5 millimeter stroke length and that extra couple millimeters makes a big difference this tattoo machine is hitting the skin a lot harder and it's injecting ink a lot quicker into the skin compared to the akis tattoo machine this unlimited tattoo machine actually reminds me a lot of the numa 5 tattoo machine they are both very very similar they inject ink at about the same rate the only difference is that the unlimited tattoo machine has less vibration and sound compared to the NUMA. I understand that that is an unfair comparison to make with the NUMA 5 because the NUMA 5 is a completely different system. And I suggest you guys go check out uh, my YouTube video on my channel about that machine. I am specifically talking about the rate that it puts ink into the skin. I've been kind of tattooing for enough years now to where I have developed my own style of tattooing. I do what I call a painterly style of realism for color work. And then if I do black and gray, I'm using opaque grays. I almost specifically only use round shaders and curves mags i almost never use liners anymore and i hardly ever will use a, a soft bug pen mag the tattoos i do is just mostly saturation of skin and then in the backgrounds i'll use a mag for some blending and for the style that i specifically do this machine is pretty much perfect this machine in the 4.5 millimeter stroke length actually puts in ink so fast that sometimes i forget to even stretch the skin properly when i get to a difficult area that i normally have to stretch a lot i just hardly have to stretch it just goes right in if your plan is to get this tattoo machine and do smooth black and gray gray wash shading i would absolutely not suggest the 4.5 millimeter stroke version instead i would suggest that you get the 3.5 millimeter stroke version no matter how much you change the response settings inside this tattoo machine you cannot get it to hit so smooth that it would be good for gray wash shading. It would just be better with the 3.5. If you change the responsive settings in the 4.5, you can blend out black and other colors and you could get a good blend with it. It's just, you're not going to be able to go 
perfectly smooth into skin tone like you can with like a, a shorter stroke length machine. I'm pretty sure they're going to release the other millimeter stroke lengths in just a year from now. So you'll be able to get the three millimeter, the four millimeter and the five millimeter. And I would probably suggest if you want a better all around unlimited two tattoo machine, I would probably wait for the four millimeter option. Otherwise you could probably get away with the 3.5 millimeter option as an all arounder, but it would probably just be better if you waited for the 4.0 millimeter one. If you do mostly line work stipple and color, I would highly suggest the 4.5 millimeter one. I feel like I'm getting a shitload of battery life inside this tattoo machine also compared to my normal daily driver where I'm using the Akis M1 tattoo machine every single day. I'm getting a lot less battery life in the Akis machine and I don't really know if it's the Akis tattoo machine just draining the power because of the high wattage motor or if it's just that my batteries are slowly starting to go to shit inside that machine and I should probably get new batteries. But I'm getting roughly around eight and a half to nine hours with this 2000 milliamp battery. I just did this portrait of this ice demon king dude from game of thrones and i mean start to finish it was about eight and a half hours and then my tattoo machine died and then we called it a day i know a lot of people are watching thinking that they could tattoo that in like you know four hours but screw you <laughs> i like to take my time but if that was any other tattoo machine that i owned i feel like i would definitely have had to change the battery during that session like if i was using my Akis, i would have 100 percent had to change my battery during that session i have not yet once had to change my battery a single time with the unlimited two yet during a session and i tattoo long hours every day i would like to state that this seems like a hot swappable option and a quick way to change your battery but it's not in a perfect reality where you had to switch your battery during a tattoo session you would pop this out and then you would set it off to the side because it would be dirty so you would want to clean it later and then you would have a second one that's clean a whole shell with the battery inside of it fully charged you would have a second one and you would want to take that put it inside your tattoo machine but you would still have to undo the wrap and everything and that's just frustrating i'll be honest though it is still pretty fun just popping this back and forth and having that magnet click like it's pretty satisfying it's a little difficult putting in because there's not really much of a guide rail system so you can't really go from the top you kind of have to go from the side like that to click it in so that kind of screws with you because you're always trying to put it in like that oh, and then sometimes it works i guess i can only speak for the 4.5 millimeter stroke version because i have not tried the other versions i assume they are also really nice and glorious just like this one if you are a color artist a line work artist and a stipple artist i highly suggest the 4.5 millimeter machine for you. I got to bring this back to the tattoo studio tonight because I'm going to have to use it tomorrow. Now, as I've tattooed with it for a month now, I don't really want to tattoo without it. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this tattoo machine. If Cheyenne, if you're watching, I want a bigger grip. As always, I am Adam Dark Lord. You can find me on YouTube, Instagram, and sometimes TikTok. Like, comment, and subscribe. Peace out. Bye-bye.